Let's say cheese. Oui, oui. I learned French just for this book. Hey folks, welcome back. Today, we're going to be doing another Spontaneous Axe Challenge. Go back and check out our first Spontaneous Axe Challenge video. Basically, we're going to make this a tradition now, I think, until I make every axe in this book. This is the Les Hatches book. It is all in French, so I have no idea how to read it. We're going to assume that means hatchets, and it has a bunch of strange axes and hatchets in this book just hand-drawn illustrations of them. So the goal is to open up this book to a random page that has illustrations of axes on it, pick one on that page, and make it. You good? Mm. Oh, Lord. It's an ads. It's not even an ax. Do you have to do the pretty designs? I think I do have to do the pretty designs. Except these have... Like a socket. It's like welded this though. This is the one that, this one has an eye. That one has an eye, so I'm gonna do that one. It's got a hammer head on the back. I can't tell if it, it looks like just a flat adds. It's not like a bowl adds. This would probably be for flattening logs like timber framing. Cause it looks pretty large. So, is the handle supposed to be that small? No, nah, I doubt it. It's just cut off because of the picture. Yeah, and the strange thing about this is that um, this is all this, the same one, right? I don't think so. These Last three one? photos are different I, I angles suppose, of the yeah. same one. Yeah. These two are one. These three are one. Yeah. Well, the strange thing is that the eye is round. All these, the eyes are round. Usually adzes, flat adzes, have square handles. T one way tapered square handles like a tomahawk handle. Uh, this is, this looks like a round, which is kind of odd. Um, I think I'm gonna go with a square eye and one way taper it like a tomahawk. And we will try to emulate this design and see if I can if I can do some little decorations in there. So let's do it. Dang it! Went out the other side. It was perfect aim. Woo! So these two are actually a different design from this one. Is it here? It says figure five five six. Here it says figure five five seven with two arrows. So this is the one, figure 556, five, that we're going to do. And it does have a square. It, it, it looks, looks like more it. square, yeah, than round. So we're going to do that one with a square eye. Two and three quarter pound block of steel. Sorry, and that's probably about, yeah, two, two and three quarters. So it'll end up about two and a half, or more or less, when we're done. Do about one and a half inches. I like how I've just got one block in there. It's so unusual. Pan, yeah, usually, uh... pan to the table of 90 pounds of axes. All right, so we are on step one now. This is a very critical step because it's punching the eye. So I am used to punching axe eyes, which are teardrop shaped. I've got the tooling for that. I'm used to that. That's what I do all the time. I have made a uh, just little makeshift square punch out of rebar, just a one-time use punch. I've already got an adz drift, which is square, but I don't have a square punch, and uh, I haven't really done this. So I need to make sure that I get this dead straight. I'm a little bit nervous about that. So we'll see how it works. Take my time. 
I'm going to flip this around after every few hits, and that should help me with symmetry. I'm going to end heat one there, just getting it started. I'm really trying to take my time on this. That's looking pretty beautiful. We'll see if we can knock it out, finish that eye in the next heat. ready to go through the other side. Pull this punch down, see if we have enough heat to do that. That turned out really well, I think. It amazes me how you can just punch a hole through a block of steel. Square, triangle, round, oval, whatever shape you want to make. As long as you line it up on the other side, you just punch that shape straight through the steel. It's, it's wild. So I'm going to start drifting my punch a little bit more through the top side or the underside of the ads before I start putting this larger drift in. a square hole now. One way taper so it's a lot larger on this side than it is on this side. So this will be the underside of the ads. This will be the top side of the ads that touches the wood like a tomahawk. Here.
that is where I'm going to leave it for now because I'll have to do this again at the very end when this is basically done for a final cleanup. So it's sort of pointless to do anything further from here. But that is 90% done. I call the eye 90% done. Now we'll get the blade 90% done. Drift it real quick, and then go in with fullers and make the blade. Okay, ready to do the blade. Next seat. Get a little side bevel action going. ladder on that so I can run out.
from falling over. We're gonna do a little bit of straightening. I wanna bring this hammerhead up. We're going to end this video here with the ads being 99% done with forging. The only thing that I need to do to closely mimic the photo in the book that this is based off of is to add some sort of design into the blade here. So I'm going to take a chisel and while this is hot, stamp in some different designs. Some, not, not something too crazy, something kind of simple, but um, this turned out fairly well. Uh, obviously. There are many ways to improve 
on forging this, but overall I'd say that this was a success and we're gonna pick back up on a part two with stamping, grinding, and heat treating of this ads. So thank you and we'll see you in the next video. Don't put that one in, that was a fail. Did you expect to catch it? Yes, I expected to catch it. Oh